Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, welcome to lesson two of this fall session of the Hudson Valley School of Prayer, and we are entitling it Asking of God. We're going to start the screen share here so Julia can talk about this picture that she likes here. Here we go. Hey, here we go. Hey. Um, do you like this picture of the Hudson Valley School of Prayer with the river? You see that little town there? That's the town we live in. That's, that's Castleton on Hudson. And um, if you see those, there's two red brick buildings. And the first red brick building, we live about three blocks up the hill from that building. So we live close to the river and it's a beautiful little town. So come visit us. <laughs> yes, uh, we'd love to have you come visit us. We are um, uh, wanting to remind you as we get started here that uh, every, all the information that we share, uh, we put on the blog site, breathingbygrace.blog. And uh, you can just put that in your URL and you should find us and then go to the category for Hudson Valley School of Prayer. And you'll see everything there. All the ones from last time as well as this session too. Right. And uh, of big importance probably, um, or at least it'd be helpful for you, <laughs> is if you find the study guide and have that uh, with you or in front of you as you listen to this video lesson. So just a reminder that that stuff is there and we'd, we'd love to have you take advantage of everything you find there. So uh, today we're talking about praying for yourself. Uh, this is an unusual topic um, because the assumption typically is that we will automatically pray for ourselves and we need to be encouraged to pray for others. And, and that may be true, um, except that Julie and I have observed a couple things. One is that many pray for themselves with less fervency and expectancy of answers than when they pray for others. There's this tendency to think God will do this for other people, but I'm not sure he'll do it for me. Right. And so we want to talk about praying for yourself with confidence and enthusiasm. Yes, enthusiasm. And then the second thing is that um, many times we'll, we'll try to pray for ourselves without first walking in peace with God. And there's a sense of condemnation or shame that sets over our heart. And we just can't break through to freedom and peace in, in our praying. And, and we, we miss seeing the will of God in that. So we're going to, our lesson today will hopefully help to address those two issues. Uh, we, we think this lack of freedom and understanding needs to be addressed. So here we go. Yes. Maybe the very first time we've ever done a lesson on praying for ourselves. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Julia, would you stop for a moment and, and I offer a prayer for this yes. lesson? And Father, as we come to this lesson, I want to pray for us, for Dave and myself. And um, I pray that we will be open to what you want us to say. And Father, I pray that you will open the hearts then and the eyes and the ears of the people who are watching this. Help us to honor and glorify you and to really learn how to pray um, with enthusiasm and confidence to you, our wonderful God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, excellent prayer, Julia. I love to uh, listen to you pray. I can always say amen to your prayers, I think. <laughs> so um, last week, we uh, introduced the starting point for this uh, fall session of the school of prayer. It's love. Love of God, love of ourselves, love of others. And, and we said this, filled with love of God, we ask of God the life-giving answers only he can give, not only for ourselves, but especially for all those he is calling us to love. And so this, this framework of love is, is uh, leading us to ask of God. And, um, and so we're just, uh, we're encouraging you to ask in every way that you can. And Julia likes these five words, right? 
Yes. Passionately. Passionately, patiently, respectfully, persistently, and regularly. You know why passionately is there first? Why? Because I knew you would put her first. <laughs> I would, yes. <laughs> yes. You, you know, um, my, my father always said, if you're going to sing, sing as if you mean it. And I think prayer is like that. If you're going to pray, pray as if you mean it. That, that's that passion. Yeah. I love your passion, sweetheart, in prayer and uh, yeah, all, the, all the color and energy you bring to our life is great. Uh, <laughs> and I'm glad it goes into your prayer life as well. So we are asking you to pray uh, in every way that you can. Um, we have this little uh, acronym that we're using during this session of our School of Prayer uh, based on the word ask. Whenever you see that, we want you to think of asking from the heart, A for asking from the heart, S for seeking God's will, and K for knocking at whatever door presents itself. Jesus said, I tell you, he said, he said this, I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. So that's, that's what we want uh, for yes. you as well as for ourselves. And not just for other people, but for ourselves. Now, this uh, unique context of praying for ourselves uh, helps us to uh, remind us of a, one of the biblical words that we introduced last week. Uh, one of those words is translated supplication or petition. And it's a word that has feeling in it, uh, at the minimum earnestness, uh, but also the depth of human emotion, uh, warmth of affection. Uh, anger, righteous indignation, brokenness, loneliness, mm -hmm. desperation. Uh, yeah. You can think of many yes. words. Yes. <clears throat> you know, my father always said, if you're going to pray, I mean, if you're going to sing, sing as if you mean it. And you pray that way too. You pray as if you mean it. Yeah. Uh, with everything you have. Every, everything we have. That's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So, um, we uh, we have these feelings in ourselves, and and they shape the way we pray. They should, because yes. because God is asking us to be totally honest with Him. Uh, now, uh, your motivation to pray uh, might often be from the needs or concerns that your family members or friends share with you, and and that's a great motivation. Uh, for any moment in prayer, that, that can guide us. But if we're looking at a lifetime of prayer and the, our lifestyle of prayer, uh, then this becomes paramount, uh, praying for ourselves in a way that God wants us to pray for, for ourselves. Now, in the scriptures, we have many examples, um, particularly from King David in the Psalms. Uh, but also Moses and Elijah and Jeremiah. And these biblical writers uh, shared their prayers with us, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we can learn so much from them. Now, Julie, I know you keep a journal. Um, can you tell us about your experience in journaling your prayers, particularly in relationship to praying for yourself? Um, I... I can go back 40 years uh, or more um, in, with notes. I can read prayers that I wrote, that I prayed. And um, I can see there that how, that how God taught me, how he dragged me along um, at, and in some points, how um, he answered my prayers, how he... Um, calmed my heart, how he um, worked in our lives, in my life particularly, maturing me, you know, because, well, 40 years ago, I wasn't this brilliant. 
<laughs> he had a lot to teach me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's good to go back and read those prayers and, and see, you know, we say, God, thank you that you take me where I am. But it's also true. He doesn't leave you where you are. Yes. When you pray, he drags you along. He moves you forward. And I love that about God, that he, um, he takes me where I am, but he um, keeps working on me. He's not done. I love that verse in Philippians that says, he who began a good work in you will complete it. And He's not going to stop working on me. And my prayers, the progression of my prayers shows that work that he's done mm -hmm. in me. Yeah. I, I so appreciate uh, your journaling of your prayers for yourself and how you share them with me. And, and I look at that and I see how God is, has helped you to mature and deepened your compassion and helped you to understand what's going on around us. And uh, so mm -hmm. praying for yourself has had this long time, long-term effect of building your spiritual life and your relationship with, with Christ. And, and so it's very important to pray uh, as God is, teaches us to pray for ourselves. Yes. We have in front of us here a psalm that we really love. It's Psalm 139, and it, it is one of David's psalms, and it's David praying a prayer uh, that in, is for himself. And we just want to share a portion of this with you just to give you a feel for uh, what it's like to pray for yourself according to the will of God. Oh Lord, David begins, Oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel. And when I rest at home, you know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell in the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the darkness of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God? They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. Wow. What a wonderful uh, prayer that David prayed for himself, uh, about himself, to the Lord. And it, it's a great prayer to personalize. If you can put your name in there, um, and uh, when, when you pray uh, this prayer, you might say, Oh, Lord, you ex have examined my heart, the heart of David Ewart, yeah. uh, and know everything about me, David Ewart. Uh, you pray a prayer like that, and it can change your life. So uh, these examples of prayer from the Old Testament in particular, but all the way through the Bible, you'll find them. They give us a way to pray like God wants us to pray for ourselves. Yes. Now, now we're going to take a look at three practical ways to prayer, pray for ourselves. Uh, maybe two pictures and an idea. Yeah. Or uh, at least two pictures and an idea and an idea. <laughs> and and we're gonna, we'll, we'll see how, how this goes. Well, uh, we are interested in uh, learning or, or helping us to pray here today as uh, God has instructed us to pray. 
And everything we share comes out of our journey of prayer. And so there are three uh, practical ways that I, I want to share with you now, and Julie and I will share with you about how to pray for yourself so that, so that you're praying along the lines that the scriptures lay out for us. The first is uh, to prepare the peace offering. And this is a, this is a picture kind of way to pray, and, and we'll get into that in a minute. The second is to take a relationally wise approach to prayer. That also has a picture with it, but, but it has a lot more um, uh, to think about. Uh, and then the last one is to pray as your own best friend, not best critic. And we will look at the foundation for that. That You hear that a lot in the world today. But uh, truly with the scriptures underneath that and around that, it becomes a very, very powerful um, way to pray for ourselves. All right, so the first, uh, first way to pray for ourselves is to prepare the peace offering. Now, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the scriptures, you know that in the Old <coughs> Testament, uh, there, uh, God's people were taught how to pray by way of bringing sacrifices to him. And they would bring uh, their sacrifice to the temple or the tabernacle be before it was the temple. And um, there, they, uh, if it was an animal that was being sacrificed, the animal would be killed and, and given in sacrifice. If it was something else like a, a loaf of bread, uh, that would be offered up to the Lord. Well, one of those offerings is called the peace offering. And this is not like the peace offering that we think of when we think of making amends with somebody. No, this, the peace offering is also called the thank offering. And it has, it has to do with coming to the Lord and saying, thank you, God, for uh, allowing me to be a part of the covenant of love with you that you have established for your family. Uh, it's uh, it's an opportunity through the Old Testament system of of making a promise to God to, or a vow to God, and so we call them votive offerings as well. And it's certainly uh, one of the basic foundational uh, principles is it's it's a volunteer offering. It comes from where the the person who's bringing the sacrifice, where they're standing, where they're at in their life, that's where it starts. One of the unique things about this offering, Julia, is that uh, it's the only one in which you can bring leavened bread, okay? And and, and living in this house with you, that's a big deal. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, during this pandemic, I've been yeah. baking bread, so. So I like that. And, and, and basically, um, those who brought a peace offering would bring something from their life, something to represent their life. It was a sacrifice of praise or thanks. And they would bring um, one of their herd animals to sacrifice or some bread. And uh, they would say thank you to God for the ways that he had been blessing them. Well, that was thousands of years ago, right? Right. <laughs> well, how do we bring a sacrifice of praise today? Well, I want to share four things here. The first is that we uh, lay out the sacrifice of praise with thanksgiving. Uh, we remember that when we pray for ourselves, thanksgiving needs to be at the heart of it. You know, then, and that's tough. If you're, if you're feeling condemned or ashamed for some reason, how can you feel thanks? Well, to feel thanks, you have to begin to give thanks. Yes, and and it, and it's a volunteer offering. It's a sacrificial offering. Hebrews chapter thirteen verse fifteen says, "Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess His name." What strikes me about that is, if you're not feeling very thankful about yourself when you begin to ask God for yourself, openly profess His name. Because the second thing that happened... Well, just a minute. You know what? With this sacrifice of praise, I get this picture sometimes when I come to God and feeling condemned and don't feel like Thanksgiving. I 
think about the scriptures, what God says about me, how he dances over me with joy. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. So in my prayers, I say, start thanking God for dancing over me with joy. I start thanking God for loving me unconditionally. And, and you know what? You start going over some of those things, and pretty soon you are, you're on the same page as God is about who you are. Right, right. I love that. That's, that's excellent, Julia. So uh, as we're laying out the sacrifice of praise, we're, we're doing these kinds of things. We're, we're preparing our heart uh, by remembering what God has done for us. And professing his name is the second thing part that, that we come mm -hmm. to here, coming in Jesus' name. Jesus said to his disciples, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The second part of that qualifies the first part. Uh, the, the glory of the Father is at stake in what we ask for ourselves. And, and if we are asking in, in Jesus' name, that is taking our place in him and seeing ourselves in him as we approach the Father, then our prayers for ourselves will, will take on a different nature. And it's prayers... I like that, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So it's not that I'm praying for a million dollars and God's going to give it to me. It's that I'm praying that the Father will be glorified in Jesus in whatever he gives me. And this is what I'm asking for. And however, God, you answer it, right? your name will be glorified. Yeah. Uh, the, the Israelites, when they were bringing their peace offering had an advantage over us in that it was very uh, visual and physical. Uh, and as they approached the tabernacle and the Holy of Holies, they were reminded of the glory of God. And, and as they brought their thanksgiving to him and, and, and would make a, a vow or pray for themselves, uh, it was in the context of God's holiness and glory. Yes. And, and somehow, if we can capture that in our praying for ourselves, it makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, once we have, we have come in Jesus' name and, and we have asked of God with thanksgiving, uh, the next thing is we wait in repentance and rest, quietness and trust, as Isaiah 30 says. Isaiah 30, verse 15, in repentance and rest is your salvation in quietness and trust is your strength. Uh, the Old Testament worshiper would come with his sacrifice, he'd give it over into the hands of the priest, and then what did he do? He waited. He waited uh, expecting, hoping that his sacrifice was acceptable to God. Uh, he waited in quietness while all this was going on. He wasn't saying a word. He was just waiting. Uh, he had given his sacrifice and now he waited. And that's part of our praying for ourselves uh, in the will of the Lord. We wait upon him. We attend to him. We, we, we want him to respond if we can. Yes. And then the, the last thing here is we offer with confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you can bring leavened bread or unleavened bread helps. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, we come boldly to the throne. They're one of the, one of the uh, songs that we listen to that we really like is, uh, I can't remember now the title of it exactly, but it's about coming boldly. I, I think it may be in the uh, application activities that we give you to, to try out. Um, one of the things, one of the Psalms that David wrote uh, was uh, Psalm 107, and it begins and ends with thanks. And, and we we hear these words from the Psalms often, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love endures forever. Well, how would they give thanks? They would bring a peace offering. They would give a, bring a thank offering. Uh, they would sing their songs together in praise to God. Um, the Psalm verse two says, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and south. And then it goes on to talk about the different scenarios that we can find ourselves in when we pray. 
uh, desert wastelands is the first thing that's listed here and how that we sometimes are just hungry and thirsty hungry and thirsty we we just our, and our soul <laughs> isn't satisfied and we come to god we cry out to him and he answers and then we we give thanks to him for his unfailing love as the psalm says here um, and then this, uh, there's also mention of prisoners who are suffering in iron chains and and this makes me think of of myself to begin with um many years um feeling chained by um, a sense of condemnation or shame over my life for various reasons. Um, some have it have it much worse than I do and had, and and um, that may be your situation today. You may just feel bound in bondage for some reason. This scripture, Psalm 107, says that they were they may these people might have been prisoners because they were in rebellion. Um, to to God's commands, and yet they cried to the Lord. It says in their trouble, and He saved them from their distress. So, what's the response? Let them give thanks, thanks to, to the, the Lord, Lord for His unfailing love. Yes. yes. Uh, the next one I really like. Uh, he, he found He has found some of them to be fools through their rebellious ways. Uh, it seems like we see a lot of that in our world, and. Yet, verse 19, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. So, uh, what do we got here? We got people that have been lost, people who have been in bondage, people who have been rebellious. And then the next one is those who are merchants on mighty waters, those who are so busy with life, they don't know what they're doing anymore. Um, busyness. In all of these situations, people have cried out to the Lord for themselves, for relief from their distress, and God has answered, and the, and, the answer, and the thing that they are called to do is to give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds to the sons of men. Yes. The second way that we want to uh, suggest today to pray uh, for ourselves is to take a relationally wise approach. And this is where your brain needs to kick in a little bit more. Um, in my studies with Ken Sandy, uh, on uh, known as uh, RW360, Relational Wisdom 360, uh, I, I observed a dynamic that helps us to be wise in how we pray for ourselves. And I brought this into my prayer life, actually, and it has made a huge difference. On the screen, you'll see... Uh, two circles. Uh, one is a smaller circle that uh, represents emotional uh, intelligence or emotional learning and uh, how, how that the world, the best they can do is to approach any situation, any relationship uh, through what's going on in themselves. So it begins with self-management, self-awareness, and then moves to making responsible decision makings for yourself picking up relational skills and becoming socially aware so that you can be, manage yourself better and be more self-aware. Well, you would think that that might be a good model for praying for ourselves, <laughs> but it's exactly the wrong model for praying for ourselves because the focus is so much on ourselves. And, and because of that, if, if that's the way we pray, if we're just praying with our own resources to draw from, we're not praying. We're just mumbling words that aren't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, no, what we need to do is to pick up what that other diagram there from Relational Wisdom 360 is showing us. We begin with God and we end with God. In our prayers, if we can begin uh, with a knowledge of God, then there's a dynamic that carries into how we engage in that prayer with him. And that carry, that same dynamic then carries into how we see ourselves and how we engage with ourselves. And only as that is happening can we um, truly be Christ-like toward others and, and pray for them, become aware of what God is doing in their life, um, seeing, hear what's happening with them, 
pray according to God's will for them. That can only happen if we have begun with God. So one, the uh, first thing here is the best prayer always starts and ends with God. Second, my response to him is always first in relationship to my own soul and the need I have for mercy and grace at the center of my own life. Filled with his compassion and forgiveness, his willingness to serve, I begin to pray for others, but not before those things have been aimed at my own heart. I need to bring his compassion, forgiveness, and willingness into my own attitude toward myself before I can pray with a love, with effective love for others. And praying for others, I'm, I'm humbled before God. I, I'm taught by his spirit. I am flexible in, in, in how we pray and what we do. Uh, and the, the beautiful thing is that in the process, I'm bringing my friends and my family back to God with along with me. You see, it started with God, came into my heart, moved into the lives of others, and I'm bringing them back to God. It's, it starts with God and ends with God. And the beautiful thing is that often we can... Uh, physically uh, bring those that we are praying for back to God with us. Yes. Well, uh, there are lots of places we could take you in the scriptures to see this circular pattern uh, in regard to praying for ourselves. I think Psalm 73 is one of the best. So uh, in your study guide, you'll find uh, Psalm 73 listed there. And uh, just try to understand it from this in this circular pattern verse in verses one to three the psalmist starts surely god is good to israel to those who are pure in heart but as for me my foot had almost slipped so he's starting with god and then he's seeing himself in relationship to god the cool thing is that as you go through the psalm you'll see that his attitude toward himself changes and he actually uh, comes to have peace with God and uh, then can then can pray in relationship to the larger world and at the at the very end he says but as for me it is good to be near God I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge I will tell of all your deeds he starts with God and he ends with God and that's what our prayers for ourselves need to be that is taking a relationally <clears throat> wise approach to our prayers for ourselves. Well, uh, this next one, uh, <coughs> Julia, has, has three questions with it. Uh, pray is your own best friend, not best critic. Um, could you answer those questions there? If I asked those questions of you, how would you answer? How do you pray for your best friend? I pray with Thanksgiving, yeah. first of all. Um, and I, um, I pray knowing them and knowing their need before God and um, with joy, I guess, a, a lot with, for that. Um, and then I like the next question. How forgiving or critical are you of your best friend? Not very. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Why would you pray for them? I wouldn't, you know, what I pray for them is I don't, um, I ask God to guide them and direct them, but I don't come to God and criticize them and, and even um, complain about them. or complain about them. Um, and I have a forgiving attitude toward them because I know them. And if they've offended me, it's usually because something with me was offended, not because they meant to offend me. And so I can, see where they are and accept them. I can love them more unconditionally. And then um, what words do I use? Well, I don't use con condemning words before God to, for them. Um, I, use, I use accepting words and, and growing words. So what if, what if your friend has, uh, has hurt you in some way? And, and you're feeling hurt and wounded, and you're bringing this wounded heart to God, and you're praying for yourself. Um, you're you're not going to be praying critical of your friend. You're, what are you going to be praying for them? I'm going to be praying that 
that God would help them see, understand what's really happening and, um, and grow in that and, and accept God's mercy and grace and, ex and that I would be open to accepting God's mercy and grace in mm -hmm. this situation. So when we turn this around and now we're, now we're praying for ourselves and we're, and if we think of ourselves, um, the way many of us think of ourselves, <laughs> the way I have so often, it's easy to be so critical and to complain before God about who who I am. I, you know, complaining about how He made me. You know, yeah. or God, why did you make me this? If you uh, want me to do this, and this is how I am, why did you make me this way? Yeah. All right. Complain, I've, complain, I've complain. I've said that to God. <laughs> grumble, grumble, grumble. You know, this yes. is this is often. Uh, the way we pray, and, and we said earlier, and, and the reason I want to really stop here and, and think about this is, we said earlier that we need to be honest with our feelings with God, and that, and, and we need to, but we cannot let that be the, the way that we typically pray for ourselves. We have to be able to find ways to give thanks to God for how he's made us, to give thanks that we are in this tight spot so that we can learn to trust him and love him even in a tight spot. Uh, you know, we, we have to be able to pray for ourselves the way we would pray as if we were our own best friend. Yes. And, and that's critical because if we don't, if we can't pray as our own best friend, it says something about what we're trusting God to do in and with us. Yeah. Uh, we can, if if we're if if we're com continually complaining and grumbling about how he has made us or how we are acting or all the mistakes we're making, that says that we're not accepting as fully as we need to God's forgiveness, God's grace. And it says, yeah. it says, God, you didn't know what you were doing. When right. you made me, I, I could have done a better job than you. Mm -hmm. And, and um, you couldn't, you couldn't have done a better job. No, God made you just the way you needed to be for where you were going to be for who you were going to meet. Um, I, I love this phrase, be your own best friend, especially in prayer. But um, I have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and um, we got a book by um, Kim Fredrickson. Fredrickson and she is was a pastor's wife as well and she got um, pulmonary fibrosis in fact she died last summer from it but she and she was a counselor and she wrote a book on um, how to how to handle this disease how to go from go through it and um, one of the things she has in every chapter is be your own best friend. Be your best friend. Um, don't be critical of where you are. Trust in God. She has tons of verses listed about God's love for you. And so accept that and just and go. Be your best friend. Present yourself to God in a way that's truthful and not so critical yeah you know i over the years um i have str truly struggled to pray for myself and i think it it changed it began to change when i could thank god for the way he has made me with all the all the stuff i would like to change i can't um in that to be able to begin to thank him for those things begin to i still got a lot of work to do <laughs> <laughs> and julia knows you know i i it's not hard for me to to go off on myself uh, when i spill the coffee all over the counter uh, or for, for the for the 10 millionth time you know um, starts the coffee going without putting the pot <laughs> underneath it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now you know about my morning when I'm waking up. Okay, um, but uh, lots of lots of work to do here yet. Uh, but I'm so thankful for Kim Fredrickson, for for you, Julia, my very best friend, uh, for what I've be, I've been learning about praying for myself and being a friend to myself because that's who Jesus is to me. 
He mm -hmm. forgave me. He accepts me completely, fully, unconditionally, just as I am. Um, probably one of the top five songs that I love in my life are, is the song, Just As I Am. Coming to God just as I am. He accepts me completely, unconditionally. He loves me, loves me, loves me. There's nothing I can do or say that can keep him from loving me. And so um, I need to begin to love what God loves. And yeah. that's me. Yes. You know, and, and until I can love that way, how can we fulfill the command of Jesus to love our neighbor as ourself? How can we do that? Unless we have, be, have begun to walk with God in peace about who we are and, and how he has made us. So we want to finish today with a couple of questions here. I'm going to go back to screen share. Um, how can you pray for yourself like you pray for others? with fervency of love and confidence that you are heard. How can you do that? Second, how can you be free from condemnation or shame that robs a person of joy, hope, and faith in their prayer life? These are the two questions we started with. Uh, here is how we want to summarize our answer here. We can get to the next slide. Whoops, going backwards. Here we go. Three things. Confidence in prayer comes when, number one, we are resting in the love of God, even, uh, the love of God, even though he knows all about us, okay? So this is a heart, heart rest. This is being at mm -hmm. peace with God. Second thing, knowing. This is now in the, um, involves our mind. Knowing that God knows our heart is yearning or longing to love him and obey him, even when we stumble or fumble our way along. And the third thing is in relationship to how we're actually asking the words we're choosing, the posture we're choosing, asking according to his will. And in this, of course, is bowing to his desires, his design, his plan for us. And we want to be like Jesus. Uh, and Jesus in the garden bowed and said, not my will, but yours be done, Father. Um, that is in that is confidence that we are on track with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, <clears throat> there is, are some verses in First John that have been very important to me in this. Um, I was at a women's retreat um, at um, Fellowship of Christian Athletes National Conference Center in um, Indiana. And... Um, Billy Graham's daughter. Uh, can't think Anne, of her name. Anne, Graham. Anne, Anne, Anne Graham, Graham Lotz, Lotz was speaking, and she was speaking about the love of God for us. And um, I have had had so much trouble believing that I loved people. I'm a very, um, I'm a very. I don't know how to say it. I'm I'm a person who, who who well my one of my spiritual gifts is prophecy. So I see things. You love justice, and I, I, that that some people don't don't see and understand. I love justice, and I love um, truth, and um, it drives me crazy when I try try to live it live that out and love people and and i just felt like i was always not really what showing love to them because i didn't really know how to and i she read these verses and they and god grabbed my heart these verses from first john 3 20 to 22 say this if our hearts condemn us we know that god is greater than our hearts and he knows everything dear friend if our hearts do not condemn us, then we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And those verses said to me, Julia, your heart condemns you. It says you don't love people because you don't feel that emotion, that, um, that passion for people often. 
but God is greater than our, your heart. I know that deep down your desire for people is for their very best. Your desire for people is that they come to know me. Your desire for people is for their, that, that they would be the best person I created them to be. I know your heart. That's love. That's love for them. So don't let your heart condemn you. I know it may say, you, Julia, you're not a loving person. But God says to me, Julia, I know better. I know your real heart. And, um, <clears throat> and so I can come to God confident, even though I don't have these, I'm not a huggy, kissy, feeling kind of person. Unless it's me. Unless <laughs> That's right. Uh, but, you know, um, <clears throat> I can come to, co to God with confidence now because he has showed me he sees my heart and my heart loves people. And so that I, as I pray for them, I can receive what I ask for them and for myself because God knows deep down what's in me better than any action I have. He knows me and loves me. And therefore I can bring people to God and be confident that whether they see a kissy feeling person or not, they can know that I love them. I want the very best for them. I want what God wants for them. I love that. The end sweet. of my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. And, and that's, that's what this is all about, is uh, learning to be confident in our prayers for ourselves. Um, and it starts with God and ends with God. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. tell you what, what her sermon, her message that day for the women was about. God stopped me on those verses and just yeah. <clears throat> drills it into me. Yeah. Uh, well, let's end today with a verse or two from 1 John chapter 5. John wrote, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. We hope that we have been teaching you or sharing with you uh, according to God's will. That is our prayer. Um, we have many, many scriptures listed for you in the study guide, and, and we could have talked about a lot more here. Um, but um, we're going to have to uh, call this uh, video quits for now. Uh, just to, to be able to uh, encourage you to pray with confidence, to pray with freedom, to love yourself in the love of Christ for you, to find acceptance of yourself in his acceptance for you, uh, then to move from that into praying for others, as we will next week uh, when we pick up praying for our family and uh, looking particularly at the ministry of intercession that God has given us. Yes. So I would like to just say a word of thanks now as we yes. close. Thank you, Lord God, that you have uh, allowed Julie and me to share our lives here uh, with our friends and family. And we pray that uh, uh, all of us will walk in peace with you and, and learn to uh, drink deeply from uh, the scriptures and, and your presence in us, telling us again and again how much you love, love us. So thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Bless those who hear. Help us to continue to grow in our prayer life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. See you next week. <laughs>